Hey everyone, welcome to Wicode. Where in this video, today I'm going to be showing you how to access your webcam with HTML and JavaScript. So what we're going to be building is this application here. And not only are we going to be accessing the webcam, but we are also going to be able to capture the image or what is being displayed um, with the webcam. And that's done by clicking this button here. So we click capture, you can see that the, <laughs> the image comes down there. So then if we do it multiple times, you know, we can make like woo, like this and just have lots of different images. But so this is what we're going to be building. So to build this program, I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code. And so you can see right here, what I'm just going to do is I'm going to create a new HTML file. I'm going to call it webcam video.html. And then I'm just going to use an exclamation mark and press enter as a shortcut to get this all set up. And then the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a div and give it the display type flex to align all the items centrally in the page. So I'm going to do that real quick. And so after we set the display to flex, we want to have the flex direction to be column as the default is row. So I'm going to do flex direction to column. And then columns make everything stack on top of each other. And then let's use the align items property to be center so that they are aligned centrally in the page. So I'm going to do align items center like this. And now let's work with our HTML5 video element. So the video element is used to embed video content into a document. The video we want to embed into our page is our video stream, or specifically the stream from our webcam. So this element is where we will be able to see ourselves through the webcam. So let's make the video element. Let's not use the source. But let's give it an ID for video. And then we're going to specify an inline style of width to be 700 pixels. So we're going to do style width 700 pixels. And next, the important attribute that we're going to use is autoplay. So outside of here, I'm going to specify autoplay. And this attribute makes it so the video will automatically start playing. We want this because when our webcam stream appears in our video element, we want it to be playing. We don't want to have to press a start button or something like that to get our uh, video feed to start playing. And then I'm just going to press save. And now let's work on the button that takes a screenshot of the webcam output. So for this, I'm going to use actually a div. And I'm going to give it the ID of snap. And then I'm just going to give it some style and I'm going to explain um, what all this is doing afterwards. So you can see what I've done is I've given it a height and a width of 150 pixels to make it a square. However, then I added a border radius of 50% which will make it give it curved edges and make it a circle. And then a pointer is so that when we put, move the mouse over it, it'll be um, the hand instead of this icon, the usual default icon. Font families is to change what the font is like. Text align center, so the center within the div is aligned centrally. We made the background color to Gainsborough. We set a margin on each side of 20 pixels. Font size will be 1.5 EM, which means 1.5 times the default height. And line height to 150 pixels to center the text vertically within the div. So I wanted to set the line height equal to the height, and that should center it vertically. And now the final HTML thing that we need to do is add a canvas element. And so a canvas is used to draw graphics on the fly with JavaScript. The picture that we're going to take is what is going to end up on the canvas. So that screenshot that we take, this is going to end up in this canvas that we make here. And so then I'm just going to specify the height and width of the canvas using its height and width attributes. So I'm going to do width of 640 pixels and a height 480 pixels. Now let's start working with our JavaScript. The first thing we're going to do is just connect each element using their IDs. So to create work with JavaScript, of course, we have to use the um, script tag like this. Why isn't everything? We should indent all this one. I don't know why it wasn't. But okay, so if we want to work with our JavaScript, of course, we have to work within here. So let's mar um, match our elements or find them by the IDs. Do that real quick. So you can see we have the video element correspond to this right here. We have our, um, oh, let me change these names. This will be our canvas, of course, and this will be snap. So we have our div, which is the button we click on right here. We have our canvas, get element by ID. Let me just give this an ID of canvas. And then we have our video up here. So now we've got these linked up, and we can work with them. So the first thing we're going to do now is let's create an asynchronous function called start webcam. So I'm going to do async function start webcam, which of course this will start 
our webcam for us. And so to access our camera, we have to use the navigator object, which, can, which is an object that contains information about our browser. And then we use the media devices object and its method get user media. So let me show you that. So we're gonna do this and we're gonna put it to a variable called stream. And we're gonna set that equal to, we're gonna use the await keyword because it returns a promise. We go navigator.mediadevices.get user media like this. And this function, this function call will prompt the user for permission to use a media input that produces a media stream. For us, this will be our web camera. Also, what this method returns, as I said, is a promise. So we'll set this, that's why we set this equal to the um, variable stream using the await keyword. And if there is an area or an error saying the promise was rejected, then we're just gonna catch it, just do E. And we're just gonna log E dot to string like this. Specifically though, a reason why this, might, um, this promise might be rejected is if the user denies permission or the desired media isn't available. However, if the promise is successful or it is resolved, then we get the desired media stream object, which we can then hook up to our video element using the video.source object. So we will do video.source object equals our stream. And this will allow us to see the video that our web camera is recorded in our video element. So this will be responsible for displaying what our webcam sees in this video right here. Specifically, the source object property of the HTML media element sets or returns the object that serves as the source of the media associated with the HTML media element. And another thing we're going to do is we're also going to set window.stream equal to stream, or the stream that we um, retrieve from our webcam. And this will allow us to interact with the stream in our browser. However, you should know that the getUserMedia function takes an argument called uh, constraints. And what this object does is specify the type of media that we are requesting from the user along with the requirements of each. This is because when you want to access a user's web camera, you need permission. For example, when you go into an application and it says it requires permission to access your webcam, and you have to either select yes or no, or say it wants to access your audio, you have to specify yes or no. This object that we're gonna make, and we're gonna call it const constraints, so that equal to an object, this object will specify what media we want access to. And what we want access to is the user's camera and also their microphone so we can hear what they're saying. And so because we want access to their camera and their microphone, we're gonna to need to give it two keys. One of them is gonna be audio, and we're gonna set that to true. Another is video, which we're gonna set that equal to another element. So audio and video here are describing the media types that we are requesting permission from, from to use from the user. So when a user goes to this web page, they'll get a pop-up letting the user know that we want to access their camera, their web camera, and their microphone. If we had audio set to false, like this, then it would only ask for the webcam and also vice versa. But let's set that back to true, like this. And now what we want to specify with the video object is two more keys. So this is, you can see video takes another object, and those are width, which is an object like this, and then height, which is another object like that. And these correspond to the camera resolution that our application is looking for. Height and width also take an object as a value and they can have three keys, min, max, and ideal. What we are gonna do is we are gonna set the ideal, so we're gonna use the key ideal, and we're gonna set that equal to 1280 for the width, and uh, we're gonna set ideal to be 720 for the height. And this means that ideally we want the camera to be a 1280 by 720 resolution. However, we are also okay with a minimum resolution of um, 124 by 756 and a maximum of 1920 by 1080. And so the way to specify that is let's do min and we are okay with, let's do 124. And then we are also within the range, we're gonna do max to be 1920. And then for the height, we're gonna do min of 576, ideal of 720, and a max, max of 1080, like that. And also just another note, if you specify an ideal value with the max and min, then the browser will try and get as close as possible to matching this ideal value. So our application will try and get the value as close to 1280 by 720 resolution as possible, but it wants to be within the range of 1024 and 1920 for the width resolution, and 576 by 1080. And now the final thing we need to do is add the functionality to our button and take a picture or snapshot of the webcam output. 
So the first thing you need to do to do this is actually get the context from our canvas element. And this is done with the method. We're going to do var context, set that equal to canvas dot get context. Then we're going to specify 2D in here. And what this does is it returns a drawing context, which basically means it gives us a chance to draw something. And what we want to draw is that image that we captured from our webcam output. And we also want to pass the string 2D into because these, these drawings are 2D. It's just two-dimensional. And then we just add an event listener to our div by using the add event listener method. True classic, so just snap dot add event listener. The event we want to listen to is a click, like when the user clicks on the div. And then our callback function, I'm going to use the arrow syntax. And then what we want to do when that happens is we want to get our context. And we just want to draw the image from our video element, specify 0, 0, 640, and 480, right here. So when our div is clicked, we want to draw into our canvas the image that is currently being displayed in our video element. Our video element being this here, which is showing the webcam output. And so to do this, we use the draw image method. And the first argument in this is the image or the video element we want to use, and this is the media object that is being displayed in our video element. And next is the x and y position that we want the top left of our image to be. We want it to be at the position 0, 0, so we specify 0 for x and y here. And then finally, it is the width and height, which we want to match the height and width that we gave our canvas, so it fits the canvas perfectly. If you can remember up here, we set our canvas width and height 640, 480, which corresponds to these here. And there was actually a few things we forgot to do. One of them is we didn't actually center or surround our elements with this div, so they won't actually be centered. So I'm going to do that real quick. I'm going to copy and paste this in here, and then um, indent this. And then also we didn't pass in our constraints object into this get user media, so they won't be prompted if we can access their audio and video. So of course we need to do that. And then the last thing we need to do is just start our webcam. So we're going to do start webcam just like this. And now what I'm going to do is I won't be in the bottom of the screen anymore because I'm going to be using the integrated webcam so to run this program. So now all we have to do is just run this program and let's just see what happens. Okay, so let's just run our program real quick. And the way we're going to be doing this is by using a live server. It's going to open like this. And now you can see we get asked, do you want to access your microphone and your camera? So what this comes from is if you remember here are constraints. We want the audio set to true and we want the video based on the object we pass. And we pass in get user media. And that's where this pop-up comes from here. So we're going to say allow. And there we go. See, it works. And then we can just take our picture like this. And that's a program.